Life is Business Podcast. Today, we are talking about how to come back from failure. What do you need to do? As a matter of fact, what is failure as we carefully define it? Now, I just, I just want to just jump into it, like, failure. because we talked about this for like two hours before we even. Yeah, but failure is, is, you know, subjective, you know, okay. um, some things that I feel like we don't, we don't quite understand about failure. I think um, we need to change the relationship with failure. Okay. So like, so you what know, do you mean by that? I mean, you got, you got big failures and you got small failures. You got, you got things that, that are like, say for instance, I had like a truck breakdown. Right. Right. So uh, the truck broke down, my motor went out. Right. I went down to one truck. I lost part of my income. Okay. That right there for me was like, okay. I felt like it was, it, it was huge. But to okay. me, that was, that was, that wasn't really failure in a, in a big way. It was more like temporary defeat. So what kind of failure do you think that people deal with most often? Like just knowing circles, family, friends, like what do you think that people have the toughest time like dealing with? I would say people more have the toughest time dealing with, with being impatient. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's, if it's necessarily failure. Right. You know, for example, if you start a business and, and you've been in business for like, let's say, let's say you've been in business for two months okay, and you only made three sales, okay. you know, to somebody that's like, oh, I, I can't quite leave my job yet. So, right, right, right. so, so I'm, so my business is failing, but without really giving their business enough time to actually grow, to actually, you know, to be great. Right, right, right. So the you, so you're saying that people sometimes failure can be can be looked at as like we didn't make it through that transition point. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. So how do people how do people get over that? Like because to me, I would see like failure as somebody typically not being able to meet their financial needs, not being able to like have the adequate amount of shelter, food. Like we want to be able to neutralize all of our problems first and foremost. Right. You know what I mean? So I think that if you're if you have the inability to neutralize your your basic needs, I could look that I could look at it that as a failure. Because like what you saying like failure to like not be able to pay your bills at the yeah, crib? Yeah, just not just neutralize just basic life. Because at the end of the day, look look like this. What does losing your job really mean to a person? You know what I mean? I mean if, if you, you only got family, if you only got that one particular job, then it could um it could be detrimental. Yeah, yeah. So it could you, be super you, detrimental. I mean, of course, it's in the, and it's the ultimate stress. Right, right, right. So how do we come back from that? Like, how do we at least... I mean, coming back from losing a job, you could just go get another job. Okay, I mean, but what if, you're, what if you only have a couple of weeks worth of income to be able to pay the bills? I mean, what else are you going to do? You, you, I mean, you got... <laughs> you're right. I mean, you're right I mean what that. else are you going to do if you if you backed up in the corner and, and, you, and, and you lose your job? Which is the whole reason why we got the podcast, why we're trying to transition people to have to having multiple streams of income because it brings on such a such a big amount of stress. So what? So so answer me this because you you have been through many like jobs and transitions and having to rely on jobs. What did you do like when you lost a job and that was your main source of income? Like how did you bounce back? Like. I mean, for one, for me, I never really trusted jobs. So, okay. so I mean, now you got to break this down to the people. Why didn't you trust jobs? I mean, I didn't, I didn't trust jobs because I felt like it was a, it was a false sense of security. Okay. You know, because, because I always knew that it was somebody else's vision and, and every job I went to, it was like, I mean, this is how, you know, you, you really got the entrepreneur spirit. If every time you go to a job, you're looking at ways like, oh man, I feel like I could do this better or. Right they're doing this wrong or they doing this wrong. You know, that that's like having the spirit to be like, well, you know what? I, I just got to do this on my own because I just don't feel, I, I feel out of one out of maybe 40 jobs that I had actually had, actually had, I would say policies or even had a vision that I, that I could actually follow. Okay. You know? Right. Right. I mean, but there's so many things that we have to do to keep afloat. Like even if you're working a job, like, you have kind of the spirit that you kind of knew early that you were an entrepreneur. You know yeah. what I mean? Even like hustling in the streets, like those are entrepreneurs. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I've been an entrepreneur for my whole life. It's just, I, I feel like everybody has that, that wanting to, to do their own thing. 
you know, I think everybody has that in them. You know, I don't think it's nobody that just really wants. I mean, it might be some people that just don't want the risk of it. Right. But I don't think really fully nobody nobody wants to 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 sit back and, and be told what to do, you know, without having any say so on, on on policy. Right. I'm OK. So it's not your vision. You you work in a job, but you have to you align on this job because you need the income. Right. So let's start with the financial failure. Right. We need to neutralize these bills. We can't maintain a job, but we also have the ed- entrepreneurial spirit, but we don't have enough knowledge to be able to get over to this side. What do we do? So, I mean, if, I mean, remember when we talked about um, the topic of of know how versus like money? I mean, it kind of goes back to that. You know, right. you would you would see you would see failure differently if you had depending on how much you know what you know how to do. Right, right, right. Like we were talking about earlier, if you if you have several trades, right, then you would look at failure a little bit different, right? Right, right. I would look at failure a whole lot different. Because because like okay, like say like if I know that I know how to drive, like say say somebody working a nine to five, I have mostly warehouse experience. So say if you work in a job, uh huh, and you you a forklift driver, but yet you know how to. You was a manager in distribution before. Okay. Or, or you got like like you got like three or four different talents. So what you feel like is a failure is gonna be like, okay, okay, well, okay, I swim that off. Right. But I know I can go get me a job doing this. Or I know it's more gonna be, I feel like failure impacts the people like that we were talking about earlier that only has like one thing that they know how to do. Like this person has been a truck driver his whole life. He doesn't he's 35 years in. Okay, now we got self driving trucks. All right, cool. Look, so let me, let me ask you the tough question because I just feel like you just giving me these all these bullshit political answers. <laughs> you, you, you give me the white collar. I, I'm I gotta go tough on you. What if you're the problem? What if you can't neutralize your bills and the failure is because you're the problem? You don't have the attitude. You don't have the drive. You don't have the ambition. You're not good with people. Like at that point of time, how do you get over those? qualities because we both know people like that like, right and 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 those are those are what we would call like you know there's types of failure so that would be like an avoidable because you would be the cause of your own failure right but those people need help too how do we help those people like what do we tell them tell tell the people that that have that 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 they're in a way yeah like how do how do people how do we tell people to face or to be accountable or responsible, like give give to give the people some things because we know these people. I've know I've personally known some of these people who've gotten it together. You know what I mean? But those to to me, I'm gonna let everybody know. Being an entrepreneur and being on both sides, I've been an employee. I was just an employee very very early. The thing is, employing those people are very expensive. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like employing those people are super super experienced expensive but i've known some people like that that have got it together so like me seeing them get it together like a lot of those people be having emotional issues nothing's ever their fault it's always somebody else's fault they you know what i mean like yeah but that's kind of like failure that would be failure like i said by by suicide by you know yourself so as as we talk about the so many levels of um failure you know some of them are like harder to come back from. Okay. So like, I'm talking like levels of, like I said, like that's like for an athlete losing a football game, uh-huh. like one game, regular right. season. Right. You know, then lose, but versus losing the playoffs versus losing in the finals. Right. You get what I'm saying? So, so those temporary, those temporary setbacks that you can come back from. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it's just, to just know that there's different levels to it. You know, you got like, say for like, like I'm gonna give you a perfect example. Okay. Perfect example is, at 23, when I'm 34 now. So at 23, I had a car lot. Okay. You know, um, I was, everything was good. I reached a lot of opposition with the the, the city. You know, the city was like, okay, um, you need this inspection, but you got to get this, 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 and this fixed. So right. before I even was able to even open up, I had already been paying rent for, on the building for seven months. Ooh. So that's $1,600 a month. Ooh. Plus utilities that I'm paying on a building that I can't, that's not even open. So I'm steady having to get this stuff done. So, so after all of that time, I finally got in, I, I bought some cars with my credit, boom, got in, got going, was open for like a month and a half, boom, had to close the doors. And I was only, and that was a huge failure. I had my stomach in knots, but that was a failure from lack of capital. 
Okay. Once, once after that, after that, I realized like, damn, this failure is strictly because I was five thousand dollars away. Had I had the credit to get five thousand more dollars, or I had a partner that could have loaned me the money. He didn't. He didn't believe in the vision at the time. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't hold him against him because it wasn't his responsibility. It was mine. Right. You know. But had I had the credit, I wouldn't have needed anybody else. I would have just went to the credit card at twenty three. I had just burned up my credit because I didn't really value it at the at the um at the stage and, and you know at the level that I um that I value it at now. Okay, so you you brought up a great point. So when you address failures, you have to really just point out what's important to you and how to map out those things to address those failures. Like because Yeah, I mean you have to identify what it what it is. I mean, you have okay. to be real. Like you said, is it me? Is it me the failure? Was it is it my business partner? Is the person that I'm, you know, is the person I'm going to? Did I have the right tools? It's a lot of different variations and ways that could cause, like, especially if you're on a team, you know, it might not be your fault. It might have been the team you picked. So, so, so tell me this. Had you followed a template from somebody who already did exactly what you were trying to do, like what do you think that your chances of success would have been versus just trying to just because it sounds like you went to school on your money. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I mean, it would have been a hundred percent more successful, but that failure taught me that I needed training before I go into something else. Okay. You know, so so it was a failure. My stomach was in knots. They came, I had bought all my cars on credit. So picture them coming and repo and they bought the tow truck to repo all my cars. Oh my goodness. So I'm just sitting there. I'm just sitting there looking like watching them take each one of the cars and and then the days you know, after that, you know, I had to deal with people calling like, hey, man, I'm trying to come down to the car lot, you know, and you got to tell them like, well, it ain't no car lot no more. It's pretty much closed. And like, damn, you just open. So I, I opened in September. I was closed by November. So so tell me this. What do you think about like failing as early as possible? Because had you been. Um, I mean, it was early, though. Twenty three. I mean, it ain't really too many people that I know that really had a car lot at twenty three. Right. Right. But I mean, like, so, if, how what would the difference would have been if you would have failed at like thirty four, thirty five? I think age plays a big part. In it I being, mean, because I, have I to think it's more devastating. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have to ask you the question, because it's like, do you really have the energy to fail the later on you you go on and you start living life? Like, like, how do we address those? Like. You know, because my I'm of the opinion that you you want to fail as soon as possible. Like, just get it out the way. You definitely want to want to want to fail early. You know, and fail often. All right. You know, like I said, the relationship has to change with failure because we know that it's kind of like it's it's just like riding a bike. Right, right, right. You know, what I'm saying you you're going to fall off. You yeah. know, it's just all about getting back up. I mean, it, it all relates to the same thing. Right. But but it's more of I feel like the accountability factor and whose fault that it is not to go around and blame it. Like if it's you and three other people on the team, I always result back to myself. Like what, like what could I have done better? Right. The girl hits the bridge, causes $8,000 worth of damage on the truck. Okay. The first thing I'm going to think about is, okay, did I train her properly? Like what could, what could I have done? Even though I wasn't in the truck, even though I knew that she probably had her headphones on and she probably was not focused, but I had to, I had to think about, what I could have done better, you know, could I have offered more assistance, resources and things like that, you know, to, to prevent that. And, and, you know, some things are just avoidable. I think I, and, and you brought up a good point because even though that you might have people working for you mm -hmm. or even though you might have a job or you might be self-employed or a gig worker, you ultimately work for yourself. All the time. So you have to. You I know, mean, it's your a, choice going in. You oh, know? yeah, most definitely. You have to have your own self-interest and you have to be able to, like you said, size up and see what's important mm -hmm. to you. You know what I mean? Like, because like when you think about failure and to me, failure is the lack of success. So then mm -hmm. we got to carefully define what is failure and what is success. Because what is success for people? Because I feel like one of the things that I suffer from is like, I'm always successful, but I'm always moving the goalposts past after when I get right to the end, I'm like, oh, I, you know, no, nah, it should have been this. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, I have a terrible habit of that. And just accept the win. You know what I mean? So so what are you saying? So are you are you saying like, OK, when you when you hit the mark, you move it to, to yeah, try like to when move I'm on the, goal, like I'll, I'll say, OK, I want to make 10,000 a month. Then I make 8,000 a month. And I said, no, you know what? Let me resize this goal to 20 before I even get to the 10. Yeah. You know what I mean? So then if I don't hit the 20, what I feel like, oh, I feel like, because failure is so- So you feel like you're bringing it on yourself then? I do feel like I'm bringing it on myself. Because- hey, that's a good perspective though. Yeah, because like the thing is, failure is so tied to our emotions. 
You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, how do you feel when you fail? Like, we never even addressed the psychological, the mental aspect of just a failure. You know what I mean? Like, how do you feel? Like, because you could be stuck in that place for a while. Because that ain't just simple as like listening to to two dudes on an incredible podcast called Life is Business <laughs> <laughs> and getting up and uh and actually just changing the perspective and just be like, oh, you know what? He right. Let me go do. Like, it takes a while to. Cause it's like, oh, you, you gotta, gotta let it sink up. in. Yeah. 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 So it was just like, I gotta get, I gotta see a shot go in. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, but even though I, okay, let's talk this like podcast, like, okay, for instance. Okay. Okay. So we put a lot of energy into doing a podcast, mm-hmm. which a lot of people don't know how much energy it takes to actually pre-plan and make sure you got good information to make sure that it's actually good. Right. And that we getting the people what they need. Right, right, right. So a success. So like I had a friend of mine that, that, that was like, man, it's going to be hard to, um, you know, to to hold people's attention for forty five minutes. Right. You know, shout to, out to fr- shout out to yeah, the friend. <laughs> yeah, to um to an hour. Right. But my thing is that like people who want good information is people gonna sit around. I've I've listened to books for ten hours, right. not ten hours straight, but I, I take the piece and I and I go back. So that's like saying, okay, on this podcast, if we don't hit a thousand views every time, then it's not successful or, right. or we're a failure. Right. Like if we went into this saying that if we don't get a thousand views or like, a, like setting an expectation that's unrealistic other than us know, being entrepreneurs, knowing that you don't know how it's going to go. You just got to set in your mind that, okay, I want to do this right. and I'm willing to deal with however fast or however slow the audience builds. Right. Because this is something that I want to do, but we also got the money to sit to, to, to do it right. to sit around and wait. So that changes the it changes the perspective. I, totally. I mean, it changes the mindset right. in what we. Because I, I guarantee you, if I was depending on feeding my kids on this, I probably would have stopped doing it after the first one. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. So you. I mean. That's so a, I mean. Point I mean. That's just being, being 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 real with it. You know. Um. Right. You know. Th- like you said, does your financial like uh, like from you? Th- does your finances? And where you at right now determine when you will quit something that you're doing. Right. Oh my goodness. I mean So do you do you choose what so my question is, do you choose what you're gonna do based on the risk factor and how risky you feel based on your bank account? Well, not not in total, because me, I'm of the I'm of the opinion that time is more valuable than money. How much time can I invest in it? You know what I mean? The money, I think that, you know. Enough is not understood about how to make money. I think that making money in its totality should be addressed before you you set like certain goals. Mm-hmm. Because if you know how to make money, then it's like I could fail a thousand times. I always know how to make money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Versus, and once you get that, your mindset changes though. Right. So for somebody who 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 wants to do a podcast or wants to do something that's not gonna immediately make money. Right. When okay, when you was doing music. Okay. When did you feel like something was a failure? Like, okay, if you, is, I'm talking like in a studio recording a song or something like that. You know what? I tied it to the, the reach and I tied it to how much revenue it generated. So it was tied to money. So, so you were trying to get attention. Results. I was trying to get some kind of revenue because at, at the time I recognized that a rent, that attention was also a, a form of currency because the more of the attention that it that got, the more mm-hmm. money that we made. It wasn't just tied to money because there was a lot of times where I put something out where I didn't really make a lot of money, but the attention was there and it built for the next one. Gotcha. You know gotcha. what I mean? So it's just like, even what we're doing now, it's like, we need the attention. We need to get value because people will give us their attention. Like it's a trade-off. Yeah, exactly. You know, in exchange, I would love to give people valuable information to help them, but we also need your attention because exactly. we need the attention to grow. We don't have to make money right away because like you said, we're already financially okay to not have to, do this podcast to feed our kids because yeah. we'll be talking about some crazy stuff. <laughs> if we need yeah, so now we can actually keep it conscious. We can actually right. keep it. We, we don't have to really go out and reach and talk about booty shaking oh, and, yeah. and all of this to That's try good. to get attention. It's like our our fan base and the people that I feel like would be best suited to listen to this is people who is actually trying to get game. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. so. I mean, and that should be everybody because we all go through failures. We all go through some form of failure where we where we've did something and we and we and we quit on something and we try to do it again or we change the goal because at the end of the day we, i think as people we're funny right we if something doesn't work mm-hmm. and we position ourselves poorly then we will we'll create a more realistic goal for ourselves yeah i you mean but I mean? I mean now i don't disagree with 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 congratulating yourself 
on, right. on, on like small victories. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, sometimes you got to just be like, some days are just so hard that you just like, look, I'm just trying to find a win in anything. You know what I'm saying? If I could just, and I feel like that that's kind of like the start of the comeback. Right, right. Like, okay, you know what? If I could just tie my shoe real quick, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If I could do anything right today, you know, to, to just kind of get some type of shift in, in momentum, yeah, yeah. you know, cause some days are just, are just bad where you just fail where you just fell a lot in one day. Yeah. I mean, people don't understand the power of just showing up, like just doing it, you know, you, cause when you show up, you put your bid in, you know what I mean? Like I, I hate the gym. I show up every day. I don't know why I put my bid in because it's not like, cause being fit is who I am. Now that I do, I didn't, I didn't have the intention. I didn't have the intention of going there to be an athlete. That's just what I turned into showing up every day. It's just like music. I just showed up. I didn't never have no intention to be the biggest in the world at first. So once I did it, the more I did it, it just became a part of who I am. Oh, it's Daryl, he do music. You know what yeah. I mean? So, and I never tried now at this point in my life, I understand that more. So now it's like, bro, those 15 minutes a day that you waste doing nothing, you could have just yeah. put it towards your goal. Like cause 15 minutes over the course of a year is a lot of time. Yeah. I mean, especially when we sleep, like, like if you sleep eight hours, you sleep in like two or three months, you right, know, you sleep of, two or three months. So it's like the year already. So, yeah. So we're just like, you know, that is ultimately important. Just make what you want to do part of who you are. Cause we, we, we try to attribute, um, the time length to being better at something, you know, like, yeah. like you, you're having, um, like I watched you like edit a video, you know, on final cut. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I seen the frustration in your face of trying to figure out certain things. But the more you do it, the better you get. Yeah. I mean, and it's and it's tough to try to put out like all of this content. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But I mean, I mean, I reach failure because I'm I'm consistently trying to trying to um trying to export the 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 um video and it's not coming out like it's it's too it's too small for Facebook, right. too big for Instagram, you know, just just trying to work through it. But it's all I mean, I just look at that as temporary defeat. You know, as I'm trying to to rise up, you know, right. you know, and like you said, and get the attention of the people. Right, right. I mean, and and it just ultimately just means that, like, like you know, you got to just keep putting, keep doing it. You know. Yeah. I mean, because like they said, the more that you do it, the more competent that you become. And it's like it's the thing is about failure and success is like you failed, you like you develop those habits for failure. Just like how when people we talk about creating habits for success, yeah. you create those habits for failure too. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, it's like the evil twin to success. Like you did everything that you needed to do to fail. You didn't show up, you made it a habit. You, you had a bad attitude, you made it a habit. You ate chips every day, you sat on a couch, you didn't put in the work, you made it a habit. So, so just so you said uh, as the opposite of habits of success there are habits of failure of course all right so give get the people like four like two to two to four habits of failure you think like to, to guarantee failure inconsistency probably the most important thing and then lack of ambition um we could talk about um a lot of people who are failures have poor health like i rarely see any people with money and wealth that are in bad condition you know what i mean because then you're I'm, I mean it's some it's, it's some unhealthy rich people for sure. But look, when you have the ability to pay for it, like look at wealthy people versus poor people. Do you see more unhealthy poor people or a more unhealthy rich people? Think about it. Yeah. I be seeing people that like that's poor, like and I don't even understand how you could be poor and be overweight. You know what I mean? Like to me, those two. I things, mean those. I mean, you but know, that's another perspective for yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, man. but come on now, you know, you know them, 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 them noodles and all of the extra salt oh, and all yeah, the yeah, extra yeah, fat yeah, yeah. on the on the um on, on the food. So this just comes a mindset with failure, like you know what I mean? Like, how do you? So is so okay? So 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 you saying even so it's like a successful mindset. Uh huh. Some people have the mindset to actually fail. Of course. So so they not so so is that intentional or unintentional or 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 is it because they just not even conscious that that they have the the failure um mindset i think failure is unintentional because who our parents didn't raise us to become failures you know like i think that every every parent's job 
or mindset for their kids or intentions for their kids was to raise successful kids. They just caught caught in a trap where they couldn't give you enough attention to teach you what you needed to know. Right. But I feel like if you get caught in a situation, right, if, right. If, if if you're caught not doing everything that it takes to be successful, then uh -huh. what would be the result of that? Well, I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, I mean, look, look, I think I mean, it has to be failure then. Right. But look, you you talk so much about failure tied to the lack of training that go for everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? So look, if you don't, if you don't even, even attitude has to be trained. You know what I mean? Like we, we, we go off the deep end. Sometimes we snap on people because we don't know how to treat people because certain times you'd be, have you ever seen people just grow up in a household where like somebody would just pat, like, will just give you your way. You might, you might be an only child. You used to just giving you, getting your way around your parents. Mm -hmm. Like you essentially became your, uh, your mother's man. She might be a single mother. You be, you essentially became the man of the house at eight years old, and she gave you everything. So then you might have developed the mindset of everybody has to give me everything. That's how the world is because for sure. a short period of time that was your world. You know what I mean? So it's just like so when you stepped out into the real world, you, you kept were, that attitude. Yeah. You know, if you grow up in the hood where you know you're the boss of the neighborhood, but then you start a job when you're not the boss. Right. You know, the other people I have to you. tell you what to do. So all of it is conditioning and training to be able to somebody, you know, we have to we have to create templates, these small templates early. And I think and it's harder to get out of the older that we get. It's like I'm, I'm of the opinion that we can't teach old dogs new tricks. It's, it's just hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, you definitely is just gonna take all day. I mean, yeah. I rather I would rather spend the time on the youth, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. of course there's not anybody young watching this but i would just say if i'm trying to force something you know i would i would i would i would make a a a real attempt at the at the youth other than like right now i'm just i'm just taking whatever adults that are open to the new ideas right right, right essentially right. so let's talk about so we're about 30 minutes into this thing let's talk about comebacks though so okay. so what are some of the best ways you think that that we could um come back from success come back for failure um, yeah come back from, from from failure so i'm gonna give one and you give one i got we're you. gonna go back and forth because mm -hmm. I, I i know that you got plenty to say i i would say the first thing is this make yourself accountable because you're a team of one essentially who's born by yourself you got to be accountable and you have to recognize what you don't know you know what i mean like if i know um a lot of times like i'm not the best with credit it's essential to where i'm going i gotta i, I gotta be accountable mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, have I been great with credit in the past? Yeah, but I think that at a certain point of my life that it was good for the conditioning for me to ignore it because it really made me develop cash flow, which is another conversation. But I have to be accountable. I have to face that account. So people have to be accountable first and foremost. So do you think accountability, because um, I believe that accountability is one of the, the 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 top things. Okay. So do you think accountability, like does everybody have that, thing where they can teach themselves or do you think it's it's, it's kind of like one of those nature things or like like where some people just born and they just more likely to own up to their shit than others i'm i'm gonna give up i'm gonna give the people a great piece of game when you're in the room you don't really have to teach yourself the game is surrounded by you it's like when you listen to these like audio books you're in the room with success right true you know what i mean when you're around successful people, you're in a room. You pick up all of those nuances, the way they dress, the way they talk, the way they carry themselves. That is the training. That is the conditioning versus you just trying to like, okay, what do I need to do? Boom, boom, boom. So it's like the more that you hang around and and and, and create your, and be in that atmosphere, that is the training. That's yeah. why it's just like. It's all around you. Yeah, that's why a lot of poor mindsets come from poor places. Like poor places always create poor mindset. You know what I mean? And it's hard to get out of. Like, even for me, growing up in a poor place, I had to separate myself from the mentality from outside. I okay, so, in the basement. Okay, since you're on there. Okay. Okay. From the basement. Okay, so take somebody that's deep down, deep down from the hood, you okay. know, um, where we come from. Okay. Okay, so how would they come back? Like you said, if they, they was in a poor place. Okay. So if we were, if, if we coming from a, so if I'm from that, the aspect of coming from a, um, from a poor place, yeah. okay. I'm already, the odds are against me already. Um, if I, 
I try to start a business. I feel like my family's not supporting. I feel I'm feeling the feeling of defeat because I'm already back against the wall anyway. Right. I'm already just trying to hustle this income tax check, you know what I'm saying? Or this, this work check. Right. And I took a thousand dollars and I tried to invest it. Right. And now I lost a thousand dollars. Right. So now I'm feeling defeated. I'm feeling like a failure. How do I come back from that? What should be the perspective on, on that for, for a comeback from somebody who's already in the, in the trenches, deep down in the trenches, not from, I'm, I'm trying to take it off. What I'm trying to do is take it off of the level of a successful person failing because it's completely different from when you, when you, when you, when you on your last right. and you, and you fail. Okay. So this is, I'm going to give the people the answer, right? Um, because there's a lot of answers and a lot of right answers. And I'm going to, I'm going to take it from the aspect of just financial, like you, you trying to create some finances, you in the hood, right? Mm -hmm. The thing about the hood is there's businesses in the hood. Yes or no? Yeah. Right. So there's money in the hood. There is success in the hood. You know what I mean? It's just that we're not reaping the benefits of it. For example, let's say we're in a house, a house of six people. Do all of those people have to eat every day? Yeah. So if I was in a house and I know that six people had to eat and they were going to White Castles every other day, those are potential customers. Yeah. So what do I have to do? I just have to cook the same thing as White Castles. Would they pay me if I make it better? Hey, you got to start thinking resourceful. You know what I mean? So a lot of times we, you might get food stamps. Food stamps is a form of money, even though it's in car form, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. I could take that money, that free money, and I can create an economy for myself just within my household. I don't even have to leave a crib. There's six people that need to eat every day. So I would tell people, look, instead of going out there, I'll cook for the, I'll cook for you. Whenever y'all need a meal, what is White Castle charging? I'm going to beat them. I'm going to be a dollar less than White Castle. I can be competitive because you might just, White Castle's brand might just be so deep that I don't care, you're going to have to beat this. So I'm going to yeah. charge a dollar less. I'm going to be more convenient and I'm going to give you a little bit more. But what does it cost to me? I got free money that I took from the government and I created an economy <laughs> just within my household. So like we have to be able to take those resources. We have to be able to look at what's around us and be able to solve the problems of the people around us because they still buying clothes. They still buying shoes. Yeah, but They're I feel like buying. a lot of people will be feeling down because the the lack of support. Because somebody will walk right past you with with your stuff that's better than White Castle is because you ain't got a brand and because you know every, most people be caught up. So out of that six people, since people be so caught up in perception, you might only get two sales. And these are people that's gonna walk past you with onions in your burger and go straight to White Castles because they don't trust you. But look, if I get two sales out of six people, that's 33%. That's a good business. <laughs> you know, think about that. Like I could actually, I could actually, I could actually make a, a, a small living off that if, you know, if I was living rent free, uh, you know what I mean? But the thing is, those two people that I serve every day who come back for food, maybe let's say every other day, right? Uh -huh. If the food is incredible, even in the household, they're going to spread the word <laughs> because yeah. other, because people are just natural followers. That's all they do. They I mean, and, and and people are not going to be able to help, but to spread it. But I'm I'm not trying to discourage anybody from from trying to sell and start something with your family. But a lot of people reach that failure point when they um when they try to depend on the people that they know to support them. But the things those are the people you need to practice on. Those are people in close proximity. If you could sell them, you could sell anybody. Right, but those also okay. So keep this in mind. Okay, okay, okay with family. Okay, so. A lot of people, I feel like, feel like failures because of their parents told them, like, why, why, why you keep doing that so much? Say, for instance, um, people would tell me, like, oh, I talk too much. Okay, so now, if I switch the game up now, oh, shit, I made a million dollars. Yeah. Now people were willing to pay me $100 an hour to talk to them. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Catch 22. So that's like telling a kid, like LeBron James, are oh, you dribble the ball too much? Right. You get what I'm saying? So a lot of stuff, it, it like you said, with food, maybe it, it'll work, but a lot of stuff is just not super believable because how many people, like, okay, take, take you, fans, how many people really supported you at the gate? Right, but who did I provide value for within, that, within the realm of my household? Nobody. I was only providing value for the people who were looking for my product. So if I don't create a product as for far as, the, so as far as entertaining though. Right. But look, if I had created value for the household, I would have got all the support in the world. 
You know what I mean? Like we gotta. We, I get what you're saying from that aspect. Not everybody would find you. Okay, so not everybody would find you in particular. Um, entertaining, as in like your mom might not have listened to a guy of your age that's right. talking about the topics that you're talking about. Right. But yet, when you go to the burger theory, right. everybody got to eat. Right. And you're going to White Castle anyway. Like, look, got you. I got you. Do we pay grandma to watch our kids? Of course. Like, if you come from a family, you know, grandma could start a business in a family. In a big family, people be trying to people be trying to get grandma to watch the um, right. But if grandma, if grandma was serious about (laughs) her business, or auntie was serious about her business, because a lot of times that's how my parents started daycare center. Like, you know what I mean? Like, my mom was just a nurturing person. So even even still to this day, even after not running the daycare center, they still take their children to my mom to watch they kid their their children so we're just like we have to recognize what people around us need yeah. we could recognize what people around us need and focus on value because i don't it care. would prevent a lot of failures you're saying right it would the thing is now i think the point that you're making is that trying to get the fam family who naturally don't take us serious to take us serious right now i'm just <laughs> saying don't feel defeated and don't right. feel like a failure if the people that you know don't bite on what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's basically where I'm com- where I'm coming from. I, I just don't want anybody because I know that a lot of people, you know, get discouraged. I just heard like my cousins like, well, why they just won't? I, I'm I'm selling clothes. Why they won't? Why they won't share my stuff? Because the thing I'm is- like because probably I think it's more because more so if you don't do it for a long time, you know, if people see consistency, then they start to support I, you. And that's another great thing. I don't care what you do. You got to prove yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we have children and this is the whole idea of what we talked about last time from the trust fund. You got to prove yourself to get this money. You got to prove yourself to get my support. Even my support. You got to prove yourself. Like why do why should I why should I do that? Everybody's doing that. And my family, if I cook for people every day for 90 days, you don't think they're going to support me? I'm cooking every day. And then they're going to tell then you know mom going to get on the phone, you know for Daryl cooking yeah <laughs> you know because hey you know? hey straight up hey straight up i mean and that's the reality i mean i hope there's a lot of people that in her just listening to this particular point of it yeah you know consistency makes people believers yeah you know because a lot like you said everybody got a podcast yeah everybody a rapper right everybody trying to start a business everybody selling clothes bras stones whatever yeah. you know so what separates you from them i think that the most a lot a, another good point is when you when you have support you don't need a lot of it to survive. You know what I mean? Like I'm musically, I never had the hugest support in the world. I made a great living because once you recognize value, if the value is big enough, people to pay for it and it won't think twice about it. Mm-hmm. So that's the kind of thing that, you know, cause look, if I had a Gordon Ramsay that lived with me, bro, I'm not going outside to like <laughs> eat no food, eat nobody food. Because the, the the main complaint that I have with going out is that the food don't taste like I how I'm making nah, it. Nah, nah, it never does. Right, so it's just like I'm trying to get Justin to go ahead and do this restaurant. That's what man, I'm, I'm saying. I'm juicing because I don't want to eat nobody else stuff. Yeah, like I mean, because the thing is, it's that dis, it's that disappointment when you know that you have something in house and you don't have to go far. Because what's more convenient than somebody in your own house that's incredible? Like think about that. So we we think so much, and I think that's one of the killers of our momentum is that we think that the people in our own environment won't support us. If we're incredible, they will support you if you're incredible. If you're incredible and consistent out, everybody will support you. True. People go far and wide. That's why I think that we need more structure within our communities to be able to come in and, and see what we're doing because we could prove it. You know, I had to prove myself on musically. I never got hung up on like nobody supported because I had enough time not to care. The thing is, those conversations like me getting a job because I was getting older. So it was just like, okay, so, so hold up. So, so, and it's, so, so say you are trying something, right? Right, right, right. You're, you're trying your hardest. Right. How do you, how do we get somebody from not giving up or not, not feeling like a failure if they not getting the support, even though they, they good because, okay, like some, something, a lot of the stuff we could sell to our people, but sometimes like, what if you selling, what if you're selling, I mean, hammers? Not everybody's going to need a hammer. You get what I'm saying? But what if that's what you know how to build? Well, look, and this is this is the next week's podcast. is like Jack of all trades versus master of one, right? Yeah. So we're going to be talking about that soon. But look, you got to adjust to your environment. If you're trying to survive, like... So wait. would that be the key? Okay, see, that's what I was looking for. So is that something that you would deem to be a key to prevent failure is going with what you are competent with? 
do you think that would that would that would slim the chances of you failing? Of course, but look, look, because like this, whenever you work a job, I work jobs for my parents that I hated. So if I can work a job for my parents that I hate, I know people are out here working jobs that they don't love. Imagine going to school, getting a degree, getting on the job, and then hating it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like people do that, people do those things all the time. I just think that if you if you're willing to do that, then you should be willing to switch up to any environment and provide your 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 the people within close proximity with some kind of skill or service mm -hmm. that they would need. We don't do enough, we don't do enough of that. There's people around us in our neighborhoods just making all of the money off of us. People say that there's no money in the hood. If there's no money in the hood, then why are businesses there? There's money there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this business is just that's been open for years, just just based off of the hood's money. Right. Right. And they're not afraid. They know everybody in the hood and will develop all, all the relationships with everybody in the hood. And these, these could be stone cold killers. They know them by first name. What up, John? What up, Ray Ray? You know yeah. what I mean? So it's just like and they ain't tripping either. They ain't tripping. They and they know that they know that if we're the only store of this kind in the neighborhood, that the people in the neighborhood will actually protect us. Because they don't have this. They don't have enough resources to even. Right. To go and get it or travel. Yeah. You know, so then I could really just like kind of debo on my price point. Because where's the competition? And you don't have to have customer. And you don't have to have good customer service. service right. That's a lot of things that you could lack off of. So when it comes to failure, we got to really put it in perspective to see what's around us. Because, man, if I go broke, I'm just I'm trying to find everything that I can from the skills that I have. Or either I'm trying to see what people need around me and develop those. You know what I mean, and it would be relatively. So I think that 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 to me might be the gem that I that I didn't know um, that was coming in, during this podcast would be the the key thing to to overcoming it to even prevent it. Right in the first place would be to to try to figure out a business that is congenial to and advantageous to the environment that you are already currently in. You don't have to limit yourself to that particular environment, but it would be the best start because you will be. Because business is nothing but solving a problem. So I, if you if you see a problem, then I could know. make if I went broke, I could make money off you right now. Because you know what I know you need? You need content. If I came in here with a camera and I shot you every day and created the content, I know that one, you got the capital to pay for it. And two, the more content that you create, the more that you grow. I would just be around you 24 seven and shoot as much content and edit it as possible. Would you pay me for it? Yeah, because that's what you need. Yeah. So no, that's the only thing that I'll have to do is just recognize what you need. I could do that with everybody. I could do that with grandma. Cause I know grandma still wants something to eat every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Would she pay me? Yeah. Twenty dollars a day, ten dollars a day. Every time I so, go. Home. So that would be safe to say to prevent failure would be sticking to what you're competent at and and, and seeing what the what the culture needs from right. you. Right. You know, I mean address uh um what my boy PJ would call a pain point. Yeah, you know, and I think that we don't do a good, a uh, 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 a great enough job at doing that of seeing what people need around us. We want to do the sexy jobs. We want to do the good looking jobs. Yeah, we want to do the things that are just that everybody celebrates because we want to be some celebrities. But we could be celebrated at anything. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I have a cousin. Um, he cooks out of his house. He's an amazing chef. And and my perspective is all shout out to John. John Smith is my cousin. Yo, shout out to John. Um, and I'm I'm of the opinion that people in my family only need to shop with him. Y'all, y'all are paying for people anyway. So if we all just shop with him, it would create him the economy to never have to depend on nobody. You know what I mean? Because you gotta eat anyway. Because you gotta eat. I mean, anyway. but, but is he cooking a variation of things or is he just yeah. you know, okay? Yeah. So he's cooking an order, anything. Yeah, he's cooking an order. It might take a little bit longer sometimes, but his food is so good. It's just like his food is so great that, you know, even with the variations, even if you don't want what he's cooking that day, you're going you gonna to want some. You know, <laughs> and we need that because the thing is, if you look at it, these restaurants that we're eating from, they cook the same thing every day. The same six True. items. Yeah. So if he cooked the same six items that he's he's actually competing with the people that we shop with anyway. Well, essentially, I would just go to a different restaurant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, if I was eating meat or eating stuff, you know, if I want burgers today and chicken tomorrow, and sometimes, you know, when I was eating chicken, I just, I wouldn't be in the mood for a particular type of seasoning, you know, maybe yeah. not Popeye's. I'd rather do KFC or Lee's or something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know? And that make all the difference. 
So, you know what I mean? But, but it's, still, but, but for the, just for the sake of just supporting in our community, I mean, I, I would, but John would you, needs the business. Right, you know? right. So would you go out of the way if the food was still good? If, even if yeah, I mean, I would go, I mean, I go out my way all the time to go yeah. spend with, with, um, with black companies and then being vegan, right. I, we, we often have to go out our way if we want to get like, if I want to get a side bowl or something like that. Right. Um, I mean, on a, on the South side of Atlanta, you know, it, it's not really, I wouldn't say it's not a lot of them, but of course more, more stuff is in Midtown, you right, know, right, right, right. is it, is it North where the money at, you know, cause like right. you said, where the money at people were healthier. So right. they, you know, they more conscious of it. You know, right. I mean, you could tell exactly where the money is cause that's where the healthy places be at. Right. Where you see people jogging outside and they don't <laughs> never be where the gunshots be at. Right. This is, this <laughs> is very, very true. So, I mean, like. You know, I, we, we have to understand that there's so many resources around us that if you're if you're trying to neutralize like those bills and what you know how to do is so many things that you but like you said, how you start the podcast off podcast off. If it's just a temporary setback, then even that to me needs a mindset change because you kind of have to recognize what a failure was in yeah. doing that particular thing. And then you gotta also think about, you know, like as we as we come in towards, you know, the 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 winding down of this particular right. session. Right. Um, I'm gonna always go back to the relationship with failure. Like, like now I look to fail. Right. I, I never looked at to fail look to fail before. Now I look to fail simply because the failure is where the next obstacle, which which is the next opportunity for me to become better. Right. Because I mean, I can get on her and do something, you know, and, and and do something that I don't and be very mediocre at it and just throw out content, you know. But if I want to be like, dang, you know, every video I'm doing or every podcast, everything I'm trying to figure out, okay, how can we do this better the next time? Right. I'm a, I'm going to look back at the old podcast. Um, maybe I need to get my posture straight, or maybe I need to do this, or right. maybe we should um Ah oh, damn, I think we need to stay on topic, or maybe we should find different topics, or maybe you know what I'm saying? Right, right, just right. consistently trying to stay sharp and just keep doing it different until I find the lane that works. Right. But I feel like action is always better than no action. You know, right, and right. I feel like, you know, that's the successful mindset. I'm going to do, I'm I'm going to rush in this and look and look for the opposition. Right. And until I get me a yes. Like I'm right. I'm gonna keep on this kind of like if I'm a door-to-door -door salesman, I'm gonna keep knocking until I find the yes, you know. And that's kind of like the mindset you got to have in order to succeed. I think I think to too much success it. too early could be actually a hindrance and it's oh, definitely set you up for failure later. Because when you're trying to make a jump shot, you just need to shoot. Like you can't worry about form and all of that because when you start worrying about form and your posture, you overthink. Yeah. Well, when you look, I think and when you overthink, you don't you don't really make decisions because you're sitting there thinking about yeah, it. You know. Yeah. I mean, there's a certain there's a certain amount of ignorance it takes to to succeed. You know what I mean? Like, we always have to just not know a lot. Because if I'd have known everything about music when I was going into, I probably never did it. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things that I that I wouldn't yeah. go into. It's just like as I'm as I'm like you said, we flying a plane while we building it. Right. You know, I mean, and I feel like this this podcast, what what anybody that's listening don't know is that this is a is a this is us doing a live building or something from the ground up. Right. To to show we give an information. There there's nothing to gain from tonight, you know, financially. Right. You get what I'm saying? So but us giving out the information is a is a good is a good way to give back. Right. But also we we have to focus on sticking it out in order to see what it takes to actually build a fan base. Right. That's true. We had fans doing music before, but this this will be building something in a positive light, um, without using too many um bad words without negativity without any any really great topics that would they're like wow oh my god that you know what i'm saying right. just trying to do it from a positive aspect so this is like very it's it's, it's slightly difficult but we gonna show that what we talking about we gonna keep on doing it until it work so let me ask you another question did you study failure when you failed did i study failure yeah no i didn't I didn't. I I never studied failure. Failure just happened, and then I just learned from it as it as it happened. So you didn't you didn't study anybody else's failures, like in a particular industry? Or nah, I okay. didn't. I never really thought about failure. The, the problem that I had early was planning. The problem I see a lot of people having is that they planning for everything to go right. Right. You know what I'm saying? They not they not planning for anything to go wrong. Their whole plan is based on I got I got two thousand dollars. I'm gonna take eighteen hundred and do this. I'm gonna take the two hundred, and they ain't even factoring in. Like, no, bro, you need to invest the twelve. You need to pay your rent. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I mean, hey, if it's a good enough something for you to to take that chance, I, I definitely would take it. But you just you definitely gotta plan for the unforeseen. It, it, it's kind of going with like saving money. If you're a person that saves money, you will be easy easily be able to to prevent failure in a business because you already know how to manage. Right. And you gotta have some motivation in the tank for a rainy day. Mm-hmm. You gotta have some money in the tank for a rainy day. Right. You gotta have some support in the tank for a rainy day because right. those rainy days are gonna come when it, when it comes to this entrepreneurship. Right, right. It's very, very tough. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's even tough every day now. Um, just on on the strength of like doing this, it's like, man, I could really be making a lot of money doing some other stuff right now. Like, I'm giving so much time into trying to build a, um, a likeness for my brand, for my personal brand, you know, um, and becoming a. a a, a, um, a, a celebrated person, you know, be becoming a person that, that that I don't want people to be like, oh yeah, that's Kobe. I want people to be like, oh, that dude, he dropped some gems. I want to be known from the dude that gave you the value that it took for you to get off your ass, right. you know what I'm saying, and go do something. I want to I want to have the voice for people to go get into action. Right. You know what I'm saying. So you know, no matter how long it takes. So we have any? Do we? Do you see any questions on the thread? Because I'm pretty sure you know. Um, we just dropping bombs. Yeah, I don't see. Hold on. I wish that you know what I wish. I wish we would have had a couple of uses, and I don't even know if uses is a word. <laughs> a couple of I wish we would have had like-minded people like us, um, to have to learn from when we were coming up. You know, mentorship is people don't understand like the importance of mentorship. Like, it's everything that we need when we're trying to be something. Are we. And like uh, LaDonna said, you like she said, I agree. You always have to be willing to learn and learn new things to be successful. You know? Um, oh, yeah. I mean, man, if, I mean, had we had the guidance. I mean, that's the whole key thing why I'm shifting from entrepreneur to teacher. Because, man, if I made the amount of money that I made now, if I was guided, like, I mean, you got to think about it. My first, out of my, out of my first $100,000 that I made, yeah, I paid. I had to pay eighty thousand to my credit cards that I had ran up that sucks. in order to even make the hundred thousand. That sucks. So yeah. I had to get zeroed out first. Yeah, yeah. So, but all of it was just from me not having a mentor, me me not really having, or either just the guy, the people that was around that had the game, they just weren't really willing to give it. Right. And why do you? That's a whole other topic. Like why people are not willing to give the game. You know? I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, of course, people look at it as like competitive, not knowing that you know it's unlimited raw material yeah. in the world. You know, mm-hmm. if you if the the floodgates get clogged from people doing trucking and the rates go so low, I'll just do something else. Yeah, you know? I, th- I think that people also have to recognize the value of failure too. Like, you know, very very valuable. Yeah, super super valuable. Well, I just th- some one thing that I want to say before we end the podcast is. We have to be careful with failure, though. Some failures you can't come back from. You know what I mean? Some some failures, you could put yourself so out of position where it's hard to come back. You know, eating unhealthy or losing so much money yeah. that you lose your family. Or, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So we have to be able to recognize it early when things are going wrong or we, when we have losing habits. Because, that, oh, man, we're only successful because of our habits. You could take us and you could put, you could damn near switch places with anybody in any situation you know con- uh contingent on the fact that they were healthy enough to hustle every day and work mm-hmm. every day and we would be just we would just be right back where we are yeah you know what i mean i mean yeah because i mean it's it's pretty much a habit it's the giving up the tv it's the it's just the giving up all of the things that you got to give up in order to get there yeah you know and it's so. hard it's hard it's hard you know because the farther you go up the ladder the more that you have to do it you know what i mean you have to you have to do it so so to sum so, it up we, we will say that failure failure is necessary it's a, yeah. it's a necessary evil in order to get to success yeah you know uh so so fail fail forward fail fail often you know um as possible because then you will be able to know what you need to work on i mean it's it's, it's kind of like a judge yeah it's a good judge of what you need to work on i think that we have to control our failures as much as possible and, we, and what do you mean? If we, if we, like you said, like you're, you are a person that can control your failures because not only do you have the money, you have the time to do it. So, you know what I mean? Like you, and you also are in control of your habits. You know, 
because you're a very per, you're a big person on data. You'll look yeah. at the data and you say, okay, if I got ten subs this week, how much time do I invest to get ten subs, and how much time do I need to invest to get ten more? Exactly. You know what I mean? So we have to be able to control our face because it's like we know how we need to act with certain people to get to a certain result. Yeah. So that's why certain people are able just to trigger you or either make you happy. This mm -hmm. whole notion of just making somebody happy or and so we have to just be able to control the failure or to control the action that essentially controls the failure or the success. Yeah. That makes sense. You got it, man. Yeah. yeah. So next week we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the uh, Jack of all trades versus master of one. Because I'm of the opinion that you need a lot of skills. I'm of the opinion that you can learn the rudiment of a lot of different things, but really still just try to be the master of. Or just master of one thing. Yeah, just master, but you can learn the rudiment of the of but, the other. But see, I, I believe that we live in the times where you, you need you need to be a Swiss Army knife. Hey. Like times uncertain. Hey, well, anybody that's, you know, I mean, we never really on the same side when it comes yeah. to well, you know, failure, failure was failure, but yeah, you know, we'll be back at it. Yeah. Next week, y'all. Um, if y'all got any questions or whatever after this, hey, hey if y'all watching after um the live, feel free to um message us. You know, I mean, we doing this for the community. Super, super. With the with the extra time that we got available, I right, so we see it. Uh, before ahead, we before we uh, eventually go, we're going to build this podcast up to after doing our live streams, we'll probably do a private thirty minute session, but there will be paid memberships eventually. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. For sure, for, to, sure. for more specific and private information, that's coming soon. We're just building a channel, but we're going to be giving key stuff on specifics on how to make money um, directly. So. You guys watch out for that in the future. Also, if you guys want to reach out for consultations, don't be afraid to reach out to Kobe Peckway or myself um, for for the game. You know, yep. And my yeah. and my new site is up. Go check it out. It's KobePeckway.com. Most definitely. And I am ProToolsPresets.com and HooksbyFidero.com. Also, you can reach out to both of us on our social medias. Yours is Kobe Peckway. Yep, on all platforms. On all platforms, and mine is King Federal on all platforms. So, it's your boy Federal. It's Kobe Pegway. This is Life is Business Podcast, and we're closing out. All right, y'all. Peace.